because my Spotify. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay. Not so much? Yeah, yeah, the mics are good. Give me a check One, on the two, mics. One, two, check, check. One, two, check. Yeah, yeah, you're good. We're good. I'm always good. Hey, everybody, I should get the jacket. You should. Leave. See you later. Go get it. And now it's the Johnny North Show. Thankfully, finally, this is what everyone wants to see. Just me, no more David Simon. Yeah, I'm gone. I quit. <laughs> I quit the show, everybody. John's taking over. This is the way it always should have been from the start. Just me rambling, talking about stuff that I like and enjoy. Today I'll talk about how, unfortunately, I watched Total Bellas Episode 3. Because I had nothing to do this week, so I'm like, oh, I'll watch it. Again, it was painful. Horrible, even. Seeing Nikki Bella talk about how it's terrible not having John Cena in her life. I did not shed any tears for Nikki Bella whatsoever. I am glad that she revealed finally, once and for all, that she is not fearless. It is merely a gimmick, and someone's going to do a Houdini right here. Yep, better not hit me whatsoever. You better not hit me. Thank goodness you did not hit me. For podcast only people, David just jumped over me. I do that a lot. I'm kind of a monkey. Hey, hey, Antoinette. I'm here. I'm back. I'm back. See, Antoinette was missing me. That was a comment there. Hi, guys. Where is Dave? He's missing. I'm here, John. It's not the Johnny North Show. I'm here, too. And I got this sweet... Daniel Bryan sports towel to remind you all to fight for your dreams. Nice backdrop here. YouTube exclusive, not on the podcast version of this program, which is Wrestling Uncensored, the Wrestling Uncensored pre-show. All of that didn't count. All that stuff you were talking, who cares? It was recorded. It counted. Come yeah, on. I know. I know. I definitely think the next spinoff show of Wrestling Uncensored is going to be the Johnny Norris show, where I just talk all the time. That's, a, that's not a bad idea, actually. Why don't you just go on YouTube once in a while and do the Johnny Norris show on the Wrestling Uncensored channel? Uh, you could do that if you wanted to. It would be <laughs> interesting. I've seen your periscopes are terrible. What are you talking about? I got like 700 views on my, my videos. It's crazy. You, really? Yeah. But it's, it's just like you lifting weights and you can barely see anything that you're doing. 700 you're, views by that. It's amazing. People love it. But like you're not talking. They're weird. 700 views on your Periscope. You can check it out. I'm not lying about this. That's one video alone, by the way. Of what? What are you doing? I'm wearing a green Phantom tank. So maybe that helped a lot with getting the views. But it's me just doing chest press on a machine. Chest press. Yeah, gain those uh, nice big chest muscles going. Chest muscles. Uh, so you didn't like Total Bellas? I thought it was pretty good this week. I'm trying to remember what happened. It was mostly like Nikki being sad, and then she saw Cena at TV. She says she's not really fearless. It's just the gimmick. Well, yeah. I mean, of course, everybody has fears. Too bad. She's just admitting her fears. Antoinette says, look at Johnny, no arms out. Yeah, what's the deal, John? Your guns well, aren't out? I don't see your I'm, big I'm muscles. I'm sponsoring there. GNW right here. Yeah. The federation that I wrestle for. Yeah, well, give him a good, uh, let's just see it there. Great North Wrestling. The Hannibal TV. Yeah, and you know what I'm repping. See that? You like cock. Boom. That's the Federation Football. Uh, the uh, Football. Fédé... Fédération Française de Football. The football français? I don't know. Triple F, you know, French soccer. Will the Cox win in football? It's a big, big, big question. The World Cup is coming up really soon, and I'm really uh, disappointed because the games are going to start at like 6 a.m. I don't know if I want to wake up for group stages. Once we get past the group stages, we'll see, but I don't know, man. 6 a.m. because it's in Russia? Yeah, but they're just going to replay it throughout the whole day, though. Yeah, I think I might uh, PVR the game and just watch it when I wake up with Zev. We'll see if France goes far. I don't know. Spain, look, Spain looks good, man. France will win. Ooh, good luck. Antoinette says 6 a.m., no thanks. I agree with you. 6 a.m. for a soccer game? I don't know. And Franco Nar Nardolillo. Nardolillo? Am I saying that right, Franco? Franco Nardolillo? 
He says no Italy this year. Yeah, I know. And I know we have a lot of Italian uh, viewers and listeners, and and I feel your pain. My buddy AJ, he's very sad. I pronounced your name right, Franco. I'm happy about that. I'm sorry for you and uh, the Italians, you know, but uh, I'm a, F- a France supporter. I have some France uh, in my background. And um, I don't have a lot of love for the Italian national team after, you know, when you guys beat us in the World Cup like uh, 10, uh, 12 years ago. You just beat Italy in like a friendly recently. Like, Yeah, on. I know, but it's never enough. Until we win a World Cup, it's like it still hurts, you know? Because Italy won the World Cup and they beat us in the finals and it hurt very badly. You know, Zidane, he headbutted that guy. He said the things about his sister. Oh, what a jerk that guy was. That really upset me. And I know a lot of you people who are watching and listening are, sa- are are laughing at me and gloating and still happy about the World Cup victory. But, uh, hey, uh, guess what? We we have a chance, actually, this year. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't want to rub it into my Italian friends because I know it's very rough. I couldn't imagine a World Cup without France. I would have no interest in it. I wouldn't watch it. Like, I don't know. Like, there's a lot of Italian people in Montreal. Uh, and, uh, like, are they going to watch it? Maybe they just root for Brazil, you know? That seems to be, like, the good call. When, like, you don't have a team to really root for, just go for Brazil. Brazil is awesome. Again, Spain. Spain's amazing. I cheer for Spain. My boyfriend Garcia loves Spain. Antoinette says she's not watching. She's Italian as well, I think. Antoinette is Italian. She says she's uh, not. Uh, she's not going to watch. She's just going to see who wins in the end. Anyways, World Cup soccer talk here. Uh, I thought Total Bellas was good this week. Um. I'm excited about next week because it's going to be the Women's Rumble episode. I think that's going to be fun. But we barely saw anything from Raw 25. Like I think that was like 10 minutes of the 40-minute show. Yeah. It's disappointing. It was a lot of Nikki being sad. And talk to the Miz and Maurice. Like, I don't want to see that stuff. Like, who cares for that stuff? Yeah, I didn't really care. Um, Barely any Daniel Bryan again. Very little D. Bryan, yeah. Yeah, and not much Cena either. No, oh, it's just more he's in the background. And that, that was a horrible ending, by the way. Like, Cena goes to the ring, and then they leave while he's, like, in the ring with Elias? Like, that's a big no-no, by the way. The show's not over, and you left during the middle of the show? People leave before the show's over all the time to make the next town. That happens. When you're a guest and you do that? No, 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 my friend. That's bad. That's really that's a big no no in wrestling. Nikki wasn't a guest. Are they always on the roster? Not really. She's not a guest though. Part time. She was working. And then you leave. Where's Ric Flair to like, you know, ramble on her like he did to Carlito? Completely different situation, John. <laughs> I think you're you're making more of this than than you should. Uh, anything else going on? Should we wrap this pre show up? Are we done? Well, don't you have um, New Japan? I don't know, do I? Best of Super Juniors, no, nothing. Wally. He's alive? Wally. He says, what's up, my favorite Canadians? What's up, Wally? What's up? Man, I was really uh, starting to wonder about you, man. Scared, actually. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Because, like, uh, if you guys don't know, oh, he had an internet deal. He says, got my internet sorted. I missed you guys. You've been very missed here, too. Yeah, we missed you, too, man. Wally, uh, long-time listener and, uh, you know, always always participating on the shows. Our man lives out in Ireland, our good buddy, and he uh, he posted a thing on Twitter. What was it? It was a few weeks ago now where he's like, oh, I'm off social media for a bit. If you need to reach me, reach me on my cell phone. And I was like, uh... I don't have your cell phone number, Wally. The only way I reach you is through the the internet. He says he's been living between places, so I guess he had a little deal, moving around, no internet. That may happen to me in a few weeks, actually. I'm going to be moving, changing locations. 
but yeah, so we're really happy to see Wally back, man. That was good. You got a lot of catching up to do on the shows. Yeah, I wonder if uh, Wally, have you been listening to the shows? Have you been uh, keeping up? You got some things to watch too now. <laughs> yeah, you got a lot of YouTube shows to watch, man. Well, it's really good to have you back, Wally. Happy to see you back. Um. Oh man, he said he listened to them all today. He got his internet back and listened to all the shows that he missed from the past few weeks. That's dedication. That's the dedication I expect from every single listener and viewer of Wrestling Uncensored. That's what we like to hear. Thank you, Wally. We appreciate it. I love it. Good man. It's great. We're on uh, tonight, uh, Wally. He says he loved the 13 Reasons Why reviews. Yeah, that was crazy. You should check the video, actually, a couple weeks ago when I revealed to John that I watched the first season of 13 Reasons Why. The look on his face was worth watching the first season. It's more the look when you told me Total Bellows was better. That's the look you got to look for. Total Bellows is way better. Yeah. Way better. That, that Wow. Couldn't believe when you told me that. I love Total Bellows. I think it's it's one of my favorite shows. Wally says he likes both. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's good. good. Yeah. Perfect, perfect for Wrestling Uncensored. He agrees with Johnny, and he agrees with me. It's win-win on that case. Um, man, you, you should see the things that I watch. On Sunday night, Like I watch Total Bellas, and the other show I watch is uh, 90 Day Fiance Happily Ever After. No, never heard. You never heard of that one. I wonder if anybody else that listens to... If anybody listens to Wrestling Uncensored... And also watches 90 Day Fiance. If you're out there, I want to hear from you. I think, I don't know if there's anybody. It's a show on TLC. It's a reality show about people that uh, bring in uh, other people from other countries and marry them. Wally says he's going to watch 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> yeah, that'd be funny if you started watching that, Wally. It's, uh, it's the other show that I watch on Sunday nights. It's Total Bellas and 90 Day Fiance. It's like reality TV. I don't think you would enjoy it, John. I think you would. Man, if you don't like Total Bellas, you would hate 90 Day Fiance because there's no wrestling in it at all. You never see Daniel Bryan on that show. It's already agonizing as it is. Wow. And it's a two-hour show. Antoinette says she watches 90 Day Fiance. That's amazing. So Antoinette is a... Yeah. Oh, this is going to become a thing now? This is bad. This yeah. Is really bad. Oh, can we talk about 90 Day Fiance on the show now? Wally says I need to watch 50 Shades. I don't know. I think that's more of a Johnny North thing. And Johnny, then you would have to watch 90 Day Fiance, though. Where did this work out? I thought it was Total I don't know. Bellas. That's, that's like, what Wally's saying. Wally's like, because I watch 13 Reasons Why, so you watch Total Bellas. I watch... A Fifty Shades, and then you have to start watching 90 Day Fiance. And we could do 90 Day Fiance reviews. We could just start a whole new YouTube show just about 90 Day Fiance, which I kind of want to do. Should I do that? Should I have a 90 Day Fiance show on YouTube? Would anybody watch that? I feel like I'm getting screwed. Maybe people would. Wally likes it. Wally's into it. I think Antoinette will be into it. A 90 Day Fiance show? Should I do that? Should I talk about uh, George and Anfisa? I'm I'm Team Anfisa. I don't like George. George lied to her. George said he was a millionaire. Anfisa is this Russian girl. Uh, yeah. And uh, she came over to the States thinking George had all this money. But he doesn't have half as much money as he said he did. And she's upset. It's like The Bachelor. Bachelor did the same thing, no? I don't know. I don't know about The Bachelor. So, I don't know. Maybe I should talk about Georgia and Afisa and uh, what's her name? Nicole, who's going to Morocco to marry Azin, which I think is a very bad idea. And she's taking her little daughter, May, there with her. Her mom, Robba Lee, does not think it's a good idea, and I don't think it's a good idea either. I'm with you, Robba Lee. This is going to be rough. This is going to be really rough. This is going to be a horrible summer, it seems. Robba Lee. What kind of name is Robba Lee? I don't understand that. 
This is what happens when you have names like Birdie. It's Florida, man. A lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people in this show are in Florida. Pow and uh, Russ are in Miami. Pow is Colombian. Russ is from uh, Oklahoma. I don't know. Yeah, see, Antoinette agrees with me. I think she's she's saying not a good idea at all, Dave. I think she's saying uh, about Nicole moving to Morocco to marry Azen. Is that what you're saying, Antoinette? Are you agreeing with me about the uh, Nicole Azen situation? I think this this show is just booming now that it's become a show about 90 Day Fiance. I think that's the show we should be doing all along. Yeah, see, Antoinette agrees with me about Nicole and Azen. This is fantastic. This is what I've wanted this whole time, John. I never wanted to talk about wrestling. I just wanted to talk about TLC reality shows. I'm going to do a show about the Duggars next. And uh, what's that other one? Say Yes to the Dress? No, I'm not going to do a show about that. I don't like that show. Maybe one of the ones about the several wives. 18 Kids and Counting. See, yeah, 19 Kids and Counting, the show is Wally. See, Wally's on it. The Duggars. I'll do a show about them. But now I think it's called Counting On. Jill and Jessa Counting On or something like that. Or not Jill. Jill's not on the show because her husband said some bad things about... Uh, there's a there's a trans uh, girl. I am Jazz. That's a show I've I've seen a little bit of. She's like 16 or 17 and she's transitioning. Well, she's like uh she's like a girl, but she has a, you know, a gimmick. Anyways, yeah, a gimmick. <laughs> All right, could we we should stop this. Uh this is this is too much. People get their last comments in now cuz yeah, this is ridiculous. Yeah, we should wrap up the the pre-show. Uh, Wally wants us to keep it going. I should talk about New Japan, though. Dominion is this weekend. Chris Jericho is going to wrestle Tetsuya Naito this weekend. Omega and Okada? Omega, Okada, four. It's uh, it's the fourth encounter between the two. They each have a win. They have one draw. This is the bout to settle it all. Two out of three falls. No time limit. It's going to be a classic match. It's going to be crazy. And there's someone from the best of the juniors. They're going to be in Impact Wrestling. Yeah, the uh, the guy there, man, I forget his name. Uh, the Bone Soldier guy. He wrestled uh, Hiromu in the finals of the Super Juniors, and he's going back to uh, to TNA. I'll get his name here in a second. I think it's Ishimori. Ishimori. Yeah, Ishimori. Ishimori. Yeah, he'll be on Slamversary, I think. That's pretty cool. And Slamversary is like in Canada too, right? Yeah. That's cool. Um, Yeah, this card is awesome. This uh, Dominion show, it's happening, I guess, tomorrow? I think it's tomorrow. Okay. It's a Saturday show, so it must be like tomorrow morning, like really early in the morning. So I'll watch it sometime tomorrow afternoon. Uh, Okada and Omega should be amazing. Naito versus Jericho. And Jericho's been talking about how he's a great intercontinental champion, and this is for the the IWGP Intercontinental Championship. Right. I feel like it would be very cool if Jericho won another intercontinental title, but this one here. I kind of want to see it happen. I'd like to see Jericho beat Naito. I don't know if it's going to happen. I'm very interested in that match because I could see Jericho winning. Because he lost to Omega at Wrestle Kingdom, and if they're going to keep him around New Japan, why not put him over here? And he's going to have a cruise, too, so I don't think he's going back to WWE right away. If ever again, who knows? Yeah, I don't know when Jericho goes back to WWE. I think he might stick around with New Japan. I'd like to see him stick around past this match with Naito. I like Swerico, as he called himself in his most recent promo. Jericho swearing profusely in his promos. Wally said it was the best promo of the year. I think Jericho, that one where he called Naito a fuckface, I think that was the best promo of the year. With the turtle there. Pretty funny. (laughs) Chris Swerico. 
He's the best. And the match at night is going to be amazing. Like, are you going to watch Dominion? I mean, I'll see the highlights after the fact and all that, but that's about it. You want me to give you my new Japan password so you can watch it? We'll see. Possibly. I'll give you my password. I don't yeah, mind. I got a lot to watch now. It's the realities, TV, and Japan. You don't have to watch 90 Day Fiance. I would Thank prefer goodness. you watch Dominion than 90 Day Fiance. I prefer that too. I think. It is more quality programming. It really is. Antoinette says, I should be a wrestling manager. I got great mic skills. Maybe for the authors of paint. Uh, I'd take that. I'd take that gig. As the authors of Pain Manager, I'd rather be Johnny Norse manager, but nobody books me. I would like to be a wrestling manager. I think I'd be good, and I could get physical, but uh, nobody books me. You have been a ring announcer a couple of times. Yeah, I've been a ring announcer a few times. Last time I got paid quite well. I got paid for my last ring announcing gig more than Johnny North has probably made for wrestling matches all year. No, wrong. Really? Man, I made 200 bucks like a month ago. What? For one, for one match? match? Yeah. Yes! <laughs> what? Yeah. What match? Yeah, of course. What match? It was in uh, St. Basil. Getting paid. That's amazing. Because usually the pay is... Uh... Oh, it's terrible. Yeah. But that, no, you, you make your pay there. Oh, okay. Well, I'm happy about that. How about the rest of the matches? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> was there pay? Sometimes, I mean, you know, do, do hot dogs count as pay, you know? No. And sometimes, no. <laughs> oh, man. That's pretty good. That's pretty sweet. So we're done? Um, yeah, I think we're done the pre-show. You guys got any last questions? We're going to wrap this thing up. Should I talk more about Dominion? Will Osprey against Hiromu Takahashi is going to be amazing. Oh, Rey Mysterio's match has been announced. I didn't know that. It's going to be Tanahashi, Hiroshi Tanahashi, Jushin Thunder Liger, and Rey Mysterio against Cody Rhodes, Hangman Page, and Marty Skrull in a six-man tag. Huh. Holy crap. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's going to be so good. Are we still going to get Liger and Mysterio, though? Like Maybe down the road. You've got Sonata and Evil defending the tag titles against the Young Bucks. That's a big match. I hope the Bucks win. The Bucks now moving up to the heavyweight division. Right. They were the junior heavyweight tag title uh, tag champions more than anybody. And now they're moving up to the heavyweight division. I'd like to see them take the titles from Sonata and Evil. The three-way match for the never open weight ch- uh, championship is going to be great. You got Hiroko Goto, the the champion defending against Elgin and Tai Chi. That's going to be a hard hitting match. Elgin always brings it. Goto too. Tai Chi is really Tai Chi's been stepping up. I've I've enjoyed Tai Chi's work lately. You've got uh, Tomohiro Ishii and Toru Yano taking on Minoru Suzuki and Zack Saber Jr. They're a good tag team. Suzuki and Suzuki kind of in a lesser role here on this show. Not as featured as he has been in the past few months. Kind of disappointing. I love Suzuki, but, you know, it is what it is. That's where he fits in right now after losing his title to Naito. Got a lot of big stars on this show. That's it. It's a stacked show. Juice Robinson and David Finley taking on Jay White and Yoshihashi in a tag team match. I mean, Jay White is the U.S. champion, and he's kind of even his second match on this show. And then the opening match, Desperado and Kanemaru, the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Champions, taking on Rapongi 3K, Sho and Yo, the guys who they took the titles from. Or, no, they didn't, I guess. I think it was... I think they took the titles from the Ingo Bernables guys. Didn't they? I don't know. They're all kind of in the mix. The... Uh, The Ingo Bernables and the Suzuki Goons, they've been kind of feuding over the junior tag titles. Either way, it's Rapongi 3K taking on Desperado and Kanemaru. It should be a good match. But I'm really excited about Jericho and Naito. That's a big one for me. And Okada and Omega is not going to disappoint. 
Oh, this is like their summer slime in a sense. Yeah. And, uh, all right, we'll get our final questions here in. Sure, yeah. As we wrap this thing up. Uh, Wally says, Johnny 13's reasons why season three was announced. Yes. You happy about that? Very happy. Not surprised, but happy. Antoinette's saying she's going to baseball, and she saw Judge and John Carlo this week. She saw she saw the Yankees. They're playing, yeah. Yeah, she saw the Yankees crush the Blue Jays, beating them two straight games. The Yankees are on a roll, as they always are. They're the best. Still a game behind Boston, I think. They won in like 13 innings in Toronto. Judge with a two-run shot, and then John Carlo right behind him. It was great. Glad you got to see that, Antoinette. I wish I could see baseball in my city, but uh, something happened, and it doesn't happen anymore. One day, maybe. She says she loves her Jays. Well, it's going to be a rough road for you for the next, uh, you know, until the season's over. Jays just, they can't compete. The Red Sox and the Yankees have the East. The Jays have no chance. And Wally says, I think Tony, in 13 Reasons Why, is a spirit of some kind. He doesn't fit into the show at all. Yeah, that's what I felt about the character. He didn't make sense. He didn't seem like a real character. Wally thinks he's a spirit. Like, does he really exist? That was my question about him. Like, is he real? I heard that rumor in the first season, but after the second season, I find he fits more in the show. But you didn't see the end of the second season, so I don't want to give it away. No, I couldn't. I'm, you can give it away because I'm never going to watch it. I am never going to watch it. That's a promise to you. I'm done. Well, the whole secret with him and Hannah, like once that was revealed, it's just like, okay, like the guy makes sense now. Everything makes sense. I don't care. I can't do it. Wally says I need to see it. I'm sorry, Wally. I'm not going to do it. I'm not watching it. I'm done. I'm done with that show. And I'm done with this pre-show. Okay? Till next week. Next week on the pre-show, and then, you know, in a few moments on the podcast, because we're not done. We're not done. We actually have to talk about the WWE. Like, what is even happening? Well, there's a lot happening. Don't worry. And Ringside Report later tonight. That's right, Wally, with AJ and Freddie. We'll be live tonight. Midnight on TSN 690 for you guys uh, watching on YouTube live right now. Every Friday night at midnight Eastern on TSN 690. Uh, Wally, call in. I want to hear from you. Seriously, give us a call. I'll put you on the air. We'll talk to you for a while. It'll be a party. If you're listening, Wally, call in. For real, man. He says he's going to call in. Good man. Cool. All right. We'll hear from Wally tonight on Ringside Report Radio. Always good to hear from everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you later. Peace. Uh, uh, solid 28 minutes was. Was that it? I think, roughly. That's good. Hopefully YouTube uh, puts it in the format correctly. I think last week was kind of messed up again. Does that jump? Kind of thing like having in the post show for the UFC. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is with that, man. Sometimes the upload gets kind of... It's YouTube. Yeah, it's not perfect. Nope. It's not perfect. That's why you got to watch it live. <laughs> yeah, if you watch it live, it doesn't jump. Man, that photo was fantastic. You were, like, outrageous right there in that uh, photo. Do I look outrageous in the photo? Yeah. For the show? Yeah, yeah. What are you going to do, man? I'm outrageous. I'm an outrageous man. Is the pre-show over? Can we get to the wrestling part here? I'm ready, brother. Let's do it. Three, two, one. Hello, this is Mick Foley, and you are listening to Wrestling Uncensored. Hey, this is the Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels, and you are listening to Wrestling Uncensored. This is Rob Van Dam. You're listening to Wrestling Uncensored. Aw, uh, yeah. Welcome to Wrestling Uncensored. I'm Dave Simon. He's Johnny North. Here on TSN 690 every Saturday night talking professional wrestling. 
online at WrestlingUncensored.net, on YouTube at YouTube.com slash RingsideReport.net, with the .net spelled out D-O-T-N-E-T. We just got done doing the world-famous Wrestling Uncensored pre-show. We discussed many things, including some of my favorite TV shows, including Total Bellas, the great WWE reality show, Total Bellas. Johnny North and I review every episode of Total Bellas on the Wrestling Uncensored pre-show, which you can watch live on YouTube on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ringsidereport.net. A lot of action on our YouTube channel, all our shows, and all the info for that is at wrestlinguncensored.net, the online home to Wrestling Uncensored. So if you missed any of the pre-show, you can always go back and listen on the podcast or watch it on YouTube. You have that option. Johnny North and I talking about Total Bellas every week because we can't fit that on the main show. And frankly, Johnny North dislikes Total Bellas so much that we don't want to sully the the positive wrestling talk that we have here on Wrestling Uncensored with Johnny North's negative views about Nikki Bella because he really doesn't doesn't like her very much. You're censoring me with what you're doing, but it's fine. I'm not censoring you. You're on the pre-show. I just can't put that out on TSN 690 because it's just it's just too mean, John. You're just too mean about Nikki Bella. Truthful, but well, fine. That's your view. <laughs> Truthful. It's your truth, John. It's not the truth. It's your truth. Uh, let's talk about professional wrestling, Johnny North. Let's talk about the WWE. They've got money in the bank coming up next week. Finally, I feel like the build for this thing has been going on forever. But we only have one more week of TV before Money in the Bank. One more episode of Raw, one more episode of SmackDown, and we're off to Money in the Bank Sunday, June 17th in Chicago. Can't wait for this, actually. It's been a while, and this is what's great about having these pay-per-views once a month. You get actual build. Problem is, I feel that the writing staff forgot how to write for pay-per-views for, like, every month. And that's why I feel the build's been pathetic for Money in the Bank, unfortunately. The writing is the problem right now. Yes. It's so bad. I don't know who is booking this stuff, who is writing this stuff, but they need to get rid of everybody. Or change direction. Or just come to us. Because things are not going well on Raw or SmackDown. The talent is there. But what what is it? Corporal Corbin? What's What was that thing Baron Corbin was named this week? Of Constable. Raw? Constable. Constable Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin now is being given a, a full-time speaking role because he's failed to get over as a wrestler. He's now like a Chief Morley type character. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that too first when I saw it. Chief Morley? Yeah. Sean Morley, a.k.a. Val Venus, for those too young to remember, uh, was... What was Chief Morley Eric exactly? Eric Bischoff's like assistant GM. Bischoff's assistant GM, but was he in opposition to Bischoff or was no, he? No, he worked alongside. He worked with Bischoff. Yeah. Chief Morley, but Baron Corbin in this role is appointed by Stephanie McMahon because now not only Kevin Owens is texting Stephanie McMahon to get things done, but Baron Corbin is doing it as well, and Stephanie has decided that. Corbin will be her eyes and ears on Raw, and he will be known as the Constable of Raw. Constable. Well, Shawn Michaels was the sheriff, right? Right. And I think Austin was something, too. He was a sheriff. Was sheriff sheriff Austin. Austin. Wow. So, yeah, they've overused sheriff. That's why they can't do that. The Constable Baron Corbin. It would make more sense if he was English, but... It is ridiculous. I was like, Constable? Are you kidding me? So now he's like going to talk way more than he does. Which is not good for anybody. 
He's already getting a little promo time there with Kurt Angle saying, no, you can't allow this stuff, Kurt Angle, blah, blah, blah. It's not good. So that was a major problem with Raw. How about Elias? How about all this Elias promo time? Is this what you want to see on Monday Night Raw? Do you want to see a show start off with Elias talking forever about nothing? I want to walk away from Elias. I do not enjoy it. And I don't want to watch it anymore. The Elias show, like, all right, he can kind of play the guitar, I guess. I don't even know. I don't like guitar music, really. Okay? I don't like that style. Um, and he's jacked. I know that. I could tell that he's quite jacked. He looks a lot like Seth Rollins. He looks like a bigger, like Seth Rollins' more jacked brother. So when they're wrestling each other, it's kind of confusing. I'm like, uh, who's who here? Two guys in black pants with the beard and the hair looking jacked. If you and, don't know Seth wears red now. Oh, is he yeah. to differentiate yeah. himself from Elias? I think so. Roman kind of looks the same, too, when he's in there with them. he got the vest, though, so. So Raw starts with Elias cutting a big, long promo. Saying, oh, I'm going to beat Seth Rollins at Money in the Bank. And then Seth Rollins shows up, and he's got a chair, and Seth knocks the guitar out of Elias' hand with the chair, and then, oh, man, Rod just gets better. It's Jinder Mahal. And Jinder attacks Seth, and, of course, the great man to make the save, everybody's favorite, Roman Reigns shows up. He helps Seth Rollins, and Kurt Angle says, Now, hang on a minute, player. We're going to have a tag team match. Gets his best Teddy Long, and, well, he didn't really do the Teddy Long impression. He should have, because that's basically what he did. Tag team match, player. I think he said, hang on, hang on. Like, instead of saying, hold on a minute, player, he said, hang on. But I was like, why not just say, hold on a minute? Hold on a minute, player. Like, well, you know, it'd be better. And then uh, we had a tag team match that was terrible. Elias and Jinder beating Seth and Roman. Elias getting the pinfall on Seth after he DDT'd him on a steel chair. Uh, the ref totally saw him DDT him on the steel chair. Did not disqualify him for the DDT on the steel chair. And count it to three for Elias to win for some reason. So, not only was the match bad, the finish made absolutely no sense. And uh, it's really just baffling. It's just like, wow, this is this is Raw now? This is what we're doing? I think the huge problem was this was the start of Raw. This is the first match that you're seeing, and you built it like this was a main event of Raw. I know you find it's not a main event given the talent involved, but they built it like that. You had a double heat in the match where Seth took the heat and then Roman took a heat. So it felt like this was like the last match on the show, but it wasn't. And you have something to follow afterwards, but you've pretty much done everything you could for a tag match. But this is just the start. So everything else afterwards just feels lackluster. And it wasn't a good match. You're talking about Seth and Roman taking the heat, which they did. And 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 for those that don't know, that means they're getting beat up, right? They're the ones taking the beating to look sympathetic. The problem is the movesets of Jinder and Elias are so basic and boring that when Seth and Roman are taking the heat, is it's horrible. It's 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 horrible. It is putting me to sleep at 8 p.m. It's it's so bad. Like, they do nothing. They're not good in any kind of way. And when there's so much wrestling out there that's so accessible now, it's so easy to watch good wrestling that when you see this on a Monday night, you look at the WWE and you're like, this is a joke. 
I can't believe this is on TV. They should be ashamed of themselves for putting this subpar product on their television show. It's it's so bad. I can't even I can't even watch it. Like I am watching it, but the only reason I'm watching it is for wrestling uncensored. The the promos are so uninspired. Elias comes out and Obviously, they're in Houston, Texas. How did I know that? Well, because Elias starts talking about, oh, when the Golden State Warriors come into town, they beat the Houston Rockets down. I'm like, oh, oh okay. You're in Houston. You're making fun of their basketball team because another team beat them in some sort of game that I didn't watch because I don't watch basketball. And then Kurt Hawkins comes out and says, uh, in the very next promo, right? Yep. Elias starts out. He cuts his little promo. They do the little match. Kurt Hawkins comes out and says, uh, "Hey, I'm zero and a hundred and ninety nine. I never ever win, but tonight I'm going to win, and everybody in the audience is gonna get a taco because I'm gonna beat this jobber opponent here. What's your name?" And uh, and his name was James Harden, who apparently is a guy who plays basketball for the Houston Rockets. The only reason why I know that is because I think he used to date Khloe Kardashian. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, that's how I know basketball players from Kardashians. I don't watch basketball, but I know who Tristan Thompson is. He plays for the Cavaliers, and he cheated on Khloe Kardashian. Okay. That's how I know basketball. So I pieced all this together while watching Raw, and Kurt Hawkins is here saying, oh, here's my opponent, a guy who has the same name as a star player for the Houston Rockets basketball team. And I'm going to beat him because I'm the heel or something. I guess. <laughs> so we have two straight promos where the guy comes out to – make references about the basketball team, the local sports team to say, oh, your sports team is not good. I am from this other town where we have a better sports team. Or I'm not even from that town. I just think your sports team sucks. That's called cheap heat. Is it not? It is. It's just weird how you went from main event level guys, right, for Raw? And then you went to... Kurt Hawkins? Yeah, like, it's very weird. But yet, you're still doing the same material. It's the same material. Bad. And that's the writing. How uninspired and lame is this writing staff when all they're putting out for promos is just your sports team sucks. You could do the same promo every night. And you know what? They are doing the same promo every night. And every guy's doing it. It's pathetic. It is pathetic. And this is what happens when you have terrible writing and guys that aren't allowed to go out and cut their own promos and do their own thing. They're not given the liberty to go out and do their own thing. They have to memorize lines given to them. Make sure you talk about the Houston Rockets. Make sure you talk about James Harden. Who cares? Who cares about this stuff? I'm not from Houston. I don't care about basketball. I'm trying to watch Raw here. It doesn't translate. Like, And it's lazy. Like, okay, if one guy wants to do it, let one guy do it. But your every promo is going to be a guy talking about the Houston Rockets now? Is it Houston Rockets night on Raw? What's going on? And the James, the real guy wasn't even there. They couldn't even get the real James Harden to sit ringside for their stupid show because he's got better things to do, like hang out with the Kardashians or whatever he's doing, you know, or not, even better. And well, then this guy, James Harden, beats Kurt Hawkins by disqualification when the great Baron Corbin showed up and attacked Harden so that Kurt Hawkins would lose another match because Kurt Hawkins' gimmick is he sucks and he loses every match, which is not good either. 
which is also a gimmick that the B team was doing until they started winning matches, but now I don't know. We'll see. But again, it's uninspired. It's it's you're doing the same gimmick as the B team was just doing. It's pathetic. Is Vince watching the show? Or is he too busy planning his football league? Like, I don't understand. How can you be in charge of the WWE, watch your show, and and not think, Wait a second, pal. We just did two straight promos about the stupid Houston Rockets. What are we doing? Rah. Stephanie, fire the writing staff. Call Dusty, I need a finish. Uh, somebody tell Vince Dusty died. Oh, yeah. Sorry, pal. I forgot. Get gold dust in here, pal. You'd hope that work. Gold dust? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. Like, How bad is this? Okay, so then the whole thing happens, and then Baron Corbin goes with Kurt Angle, and Corbin's like, hey, by the way, I'm the constable of Raw. And then we have a Nia Jax match. And Ronda Rousey on commentary during said match. Not good either. Keep Ronda away from the microphone. My goodness. It's destroying her. It's so bad. Never gets old, like you said, right? So bad. (laughs) Nia beats Natty. Nia uh, hit her with a Samoan drop after Natty hit the ropes and kind of sold like a knee injury. And then there was this whole dramatic thing where Nia was trying to check on Natty, but Ronda was there and she was more Natty's friend than Nia was. And she's like, get out of here, Nia. Mean face. Mean face, Ronda. And then Braun Strowman wrestled Bobby Roode. I was like, man, can I catch a break here? There wasn't a single thing on this show where I was like, yes, finally this. It was, it was, it was one of the worst Raws ever. The only thing that saved Raw this week, the only thing, are our guys. The two best guys on Raw, Sammy and Kevin. Sammy Zayn, Kevin Owens are the best guys on Raw, then the only reason to watch, skip everybody else's segment, and just watch what Sammy and Kevin do. And Sammy Zayn for as bad as the past couple of weeks have been with the Bobby Lashley stuff, this week was amazing. I think this week was maybe Sami Zayn's best promo ever in the WWE. It was good. I wouldn't say best ever, though. Why not? What was better? I mean, Sami... Sammy was killer. He shows up in the crowd. Bobby Lashley's in the ring. He's like, Sami Zayn, get out here! And Bobby and, and Sammy's like, yeah, I'm going to be in the crowd. I'm going to stay away from you, Bobby Lashley. And then he starts making fun of Bobby Lashley's Instagram and the stupid inspirational quotes that he puts up there. And then he, he, he makes fun of Lashley and, and his fan club that he apparently has, which I don't know if that was real or not, but if it is, it's ridiculous. But I really liked... Finally, one wrestler calling out another wrestler for his inspirational quotes that they post on Instagram or or Facebook or Twitter or wherever you're posting it. If you're a person that posts that kind of stuff, I don't think we can be friends. I really don't. If you started posting like inspirational quotes on your Twitter, you know, I would uh, (laughs) I would have a real problem looking you in the eye and taking you seriously. It's just so ridiculous, this kind of stuff. You really think people care about what you're saying or your little inspirational quotes, man? Get out of here, Bobby Lashley. Get out of here with that stuff. And Sammy called him on it. Felt real, and I was laughing. I thought it was very funny. You know you just created a lot of enemies for yourself right there by saying something like that. A lot of people like to post stuff like that. Yeah, I know. I think it's stupid. Wow. Every time I see somebody post like an inspirational quote, I'm like, really, man? Who are you? You some sort of like a deep, a guru thinker? No, you're some jerk who saw a picture and decided to post it. Get out of here with that. I don't need your inspiration. Different people, different strokes, I guess. Don't post inspirational uh, things. It's annoying. 
The little, you know what I mean? I know what you, you don't mean, post but that stuff. You think it, you like that? I, I don't mind it. I'm not like, oh, this person's like a jerk or something like you apparently believe. I don't think Bobby Lashley's a jerk because he posts that stuff. I think he's a little bit full of himself for posting that stuff. He believes in himself. That's what I look at. He believes that he's an example for other people. Look at me. I'm Bobby Lashley. You could live like me. You could be like me if you if you believe in yourself. I think it helps. It helps some people. Yeah. You think you can get jacked like Bobby Lashley by believing in yourself? Probably not. Nope. But it helps to believe you in yourself. You think you can get jacked like Bobby Lashley by uh, eating right and hitting the gym? Doesn't hurt. You're probably not going to be like that, but it won't hurt you. Yeah. Anyway, Sammy's promo was amazing. Sammy says uh, Lashley's a liar and everything about him is a lie. And he questioned whether Lashley was really in the army or not. Well, that was just stupid. Question like, Lashley if Lashley has sisters. You thought that was stupid? Like, you've seen it, like, in WWE, like, them showing him, like, when he was in the military. Like, he won, like, competitions. Did you, did you see how mad Lashley got when he said that? You, you got to understand the context here. This is Sami Zayn, a guy from Laval, okay, in Houston, Texas. Saying that a guy who served in the military didn't actually serve in the military. He's like, that was deep, man. And and you could hear the crowd when Sammy said that. The crowd was like, oh, oh. The crowd like was not having any of that. I was sitting at home watching. I was like, my goodness, I cannot believe that Sammy Zayn just said, I don't think you were really in the army, Bobby. Lashley looked legit mad. Like, I can't believe you just went there. I cannot believe Sammy went there. I thought that was a great promo. I was laughing. I was laughing out loud on my couch watching Sammy Zayn. I thought I thought that promo was one of the best things he's ever done. In the WWE, as far as promos, I think that was the best one he's done, at least on the main roster. Like, since he's been brought up to the main roster, he's had some good stuff with Kevin Owens. I'm not saying he's had bad promos, but I think that was my favorite. I, th I thought it was good, but I think you can relate to that a lot more, I guess, than I can, I guess. I, I don't feel it in the same way you do. I, I just found he was a little over the top, and him just saying anything like that with him not being in the Army, like, you just don't believe that. It's just not possible but he's just saying it anyways just to get people upset and so everyone will chant usa which they did yeah he's saying it to get lashley upset to get everybody upset it's just it's something you don't question yeah but you don't question because you know like 100 percent it was true and you're just being ridiculous by saying it's not yeah but for somebody who did it when you question that it's offensive to them and that's why it was a good promo it's good heat Really good heat. I don't believe it because if Lashley, if he puts out all those quotes, he believes in himself enough that the lies don't hurt him. Wow, you really didn't get that promo, eh? That really is. <laughs> I'm surprised. I guess I shouldn't be, but we we took we took that promo in in two different ways. Were you not laughing your ass off watching that promo? Not at all. <laughs> I thought it was so funny. That was the funniest thing I saw all all night on Raw. Well, maybe it was because Raw wasn't that funny this week. No, but it was really funny. I thought it was great. Sammy was amazing. I thought watching that women's tag match, that was funny, but in a bad way. Just the way that all ended with the stupid Bailey coming in, that was that was funny, but again. Again, like... Uh, there's no regard for the rules of wrestling on Raw. We had a match where a guy used a steel chair and didn't get disqualified. And then here we have Sasha Banks, Ember Moon, and Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss. But Alexa decides to leave during the match. So it's just Sasha and Ember. Another injury in another women's match. Yeah, Alexa <laughs> was like pretending she was hurt, right? Oh, yeah, I guess this was pretend, so I guess it's somewhat different. But it's still an injury angle in another women's match on the same show. That's right. Pretty well, Natty was pretending she was hurt, too. Natty's not actually hurt. Another injury angle. Yeah, you're right. How lazy is that? 
Harry. <laughs> We're seeing the same thing just repeated in the show. Different people are doing the same thing. You don't even have original stories. You just give us the same story with different people. Why? Uninspired writing. Unoriginal writing. And then we have a fatal four-way tag match featuring Alexa Bliss, Natalia, Amber Moon, and Sasha Banks, the four ladies that will be representing Raw in the Women's Money in the Bank match. They're supposed to wrestle on Raw, but the angle going into the match is, oh, well, are Natty and Alexa too hurt to even wrestle in this match? Will this match even happen? And, like, really? Natty and Alexa are both hurt? They both have... I think it was both leg injuries, too, right? Yeah, it was, too. Wow, it's really lazy. It's pretty bad. It's so lazy. They're putting no effort into the writing of this show. And if they are, well, it's really bad. I mean, <laughs> if this is your best effort, you need to quit. Find a new job. When I look at the talent, I can understand booking everything, but it's just how you executed everything. That's the problem. And a lot of that comes down to the writing. Whoever the agents are for the match, they clearly aren't watching the rest of the show. I think people have their own agendas and they just follow it. And they don't realize, like, this just happened already. It's, uh, it's shocking when you really think about it, right? When you really look at the show and realize how every character on the show is doing the same story. You're like, wow, what is this? What is this? No wonder it feels stale and boring. It is stale and boring. It just is. No, Vince, Mc, Vince McMahon, Triple H, Stephanie McMahon, they need to check themselves. They really do. Yeah. They need to watch the show and pay attention. And then give me a call. Maybe the next time I see Pat Patterson downtown, I should say something to him. I see him all the time on Peel Street. You know, I didn't mind the main event. Just the ending of the main event was the problem. I thought the main event was good. I thought the match was good. Finn Balor and Kevin Owens. I mean, that's what you want in the main event. Finn Balor versus Kevin Owens. They should be the main event of Raw, right? Ends in a DQ, though. It's very uh, unsatisfying. And the DQ, it's like Jinder hit Seth. With a DDT on a steel chair and didn't get disqualified. Kevin Owens won't stop kicking Finn Balor when he's in the corner. And he gets disqualified? That's the rules of wrestling now? That's how we do it? To me, it didn't seem like there was a lot of rules whatsoever on this show. It was just go out there and whatever happens, happens. And you just follow along. It's so lazy, though. It's like, well, this is the finish we need. Okay, so let's just do it. Exactly. It's so lazy. Does it make sense? No. Well, whatever. It's the finish we need. Let's just do it. Who cares? It doesn't need to make sense. It's just wrestling. Who cares? If people don't know. People don't care. Well, we're watching the show. What are we watching the show for? If they're not, If they're not going to put the effort into making a good show, why watch anymore? Raw is so bad. Big Show was on Raw, but he didn't do anything. He was just there for like a Special Olympics thing. He did the Finn Balor entrance too as well. He did the whole hand the raise. And yes. <laughs> Big Show looks skinny though. A little bit, yeah. He's really skinny. I hope he's all right. I wonder if he's going to wrestle again. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if Big Show's ever going to wrestle again. The Deleters of Worlds did a promo. Matt and Bray Wyatt. It was also very bad. Like, nothing on Raw was good except for Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens and Finn Balor. And even then, you know, we didn't get a great finish for Kevin Owens and Finn Balor in the main event. And uh, I liked the Sami Zayn promo a lot, but you didn't really like it. So what did we, we really accomplish here? Well, the B team are our number one contenders now. They accomplished that. Yes, the B team won a battle royal. That's uh, Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas. So they're now the number one contenders for Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy for the tag team championship, and they'll wrestle at Money in the Bank. 
right? That's going to happen, yes. Yeah. Whatever. Anybody excited for that? You know, I'm looking at Money in the Bank. I wouldn't be too surprised if they won the tag team titles. Because do you really think any other titles are going to change hands in Money in the Bank? Besides maybe Ronda winning, I don't see many titles changing hands. And we just came from pay-per-view where there was no title changes at all. Interesting. Maybe Jinder or uh, maybe Elias becomes new Intercontinental Champion? He just pinned the champ on yeah, Raw this week. Not going to happen. And we're not going to have a new Universal Champion anytime soon. Which we're going to get to when we come back because a record is about to be broken in the WWE. And, uh, and I'm not too happy about it. Uh, we'll get to that when we come back. Also, did Charlotte and Becky steal a move this week? I'm going to ask Johnny North. He's a professional wrestler. He knows these things. It's Wrestling Uncensored right here on TSN 690. What's going on, y'all? This is WWE superstar Kofi Kingston, and you're listening to Wrestling Uncensored. This is Curtis Axel, and you're listening to Wrestling Uncensored. Hey, this is Trish Stratus, and you're listening to Wrestling Uncensored. Keep listening. Stratisfaction is guaranteed. All right, welcome back. It is Wrestling Uncensored. I am Dave Simon. He is Johnny North. We're here on TNSN 690 every Saturday night talking professional wrestling here with you. WrestlingUncensored.net is our online home. You can follow us on Twitter. Follow me at Dave Simon MMA. Follow Johnny North at North Genesis. And uh, check us out on YouTube as I know you guys are listening to this on the radio right now or on the podcast version, but... There's going to be a live UFC 225 post show on YouTube coming up tonight. So check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ringsidereport.net, youtube.com slash ringsidereport.net. As soon as UFC 225 comes to a close, which UFC 225 will feature CM Punk fighting for the UFC in his second fight. Also, Robert Whitaker versus Yoel Romero. Rafael Dos Anjos versus Kobe Covington, Holly Holm, Megan Anderson. This is a stacked card, and I'm going to be on live YouTube with AJ Anthony D'Alessio on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ringsidereport.net for a UFC 225 YouTube post show. So check that out coming up on our YouTube channel very shortly. So always keep an eye, and uh, I'll tweet out a link at Dave Simon MMA when that is live. You'll see a link on my Twitter feed at Dave Simon MMA. A lot going on in the Ringside Report and Wrestling Uncensored universe. We're sticking with the WWE right now, and a huge milestone about to be achieved by Brock Lesnar. The Universal Champion is about to break CM Punk's record as the longest WWE champion. Longest reigning WWE champion in what's called the modern era. CM Punk held the WWE championship between 2011 and 2013 for 434 days. Brock Lesnar on Monday night will hit day 435 as WWE Universal Champion. Now, I am counting and I've done the done the research on this no one has held a heavyweight championship in the WWE in the past 30 years longer than now Brock Lesnar CM Punk was that guy the longest title reign Hulk Hogan from 1984 to 1988, over 1,400 days, was the WWE champion. That's WrestleMania 1 to pretty much almost 4. Shows you the power of Hulkamania, brother. Back then, oh yeah, without question. I believe in it. I still believe in it. Yeah. No one's had a run like that. No one. Okay. Well... Bob Backlund did. It's not the same. But it's different. Yeah. But CM Punk's run was different than Hulk Hogan's run. 
Hulk Hogan from 84 to 88, you know, like Punk said in one of his promos, you know. Bruno San Martino may have sold out the garden, but... And Hulk Hogan, he didn't have to wrestle the schedule. He didn't have to wrestle Ryback in TLC matches. CM Punk, what he did over that 434 days was incredible. And his body took a toll. And he talked about what happened to his body on a podcast with Colt Cabana. And then the WWE and the WWE doctor sued him for it. And this week, CM Punk won his lawsuit, beat the WWE, and doesn't have to pay the WWE the millions of dollars or the doctor for the WWE, Dr. Amen, the millions of dollars that he was seeking from Cabana and from CM Punk. And CM Punk did an interview recently where he said he thinks the WWE deliberately made the trial This week, the week of CM Punk's fight, to stick it to him. Which, if they did, is disgusting. I believe him. I think they did. I believe him, too. And not only did the WWE do this to CM Punk, but they are going to erase his record of the longest reigning champion over the past 30 years with Brock Lesnar. A guy who barely shows up. Who, in my opinion, doesn't really deserve to be the longest reigning champion in the WWE since Hulk Hogan. You look at longest reigning heavyweight champions in the WWE. And the record will be Hulk Hogan, Brock Lesnar. Like Brock is like after Hogan now. And he hasn't been on the road like Hogan was on the road, like Punk was on the road. He didn't defend his title like Bob Backlund did. For Backlund held it for like 1,400 days too. But this is way, way, way back we're talking. But in the modern era, in the past 30 years, CM Punk was the guy. John Cena was the guy. JBL was the guy. These are all guys that held the WWE Championship or World Heavyweight Championship for like 300-something days. That's an accomplishment. You hold the title for 200 days, and it's impressive. Well, this is another thing, too. CM Punk, that's WWE Championship reign, 434. Brock, it's universal, so it's a different championship, different grandeur. It is a different championship. But I'm counting the World Heavyweight Championship, the WWE Championship, the Universal Championship. We're talking about heavyweight champions in the WWE. Brock's the Raw champion. He is going to be the second longest reigning. And the, the longest reigning in the past 30 years. And he hasn't earned it. You say he hasn't earned it. Every time he shows up, he's the main event. He's the guy that everyone wants to see. It's the match, the most important match on the show. Is it? It gets the most talk. It gets the most buzz. It is. We got Ronda now. We don't need Brock anymore. Brock, why don't you go back to the UFC? I really, I I dare Brock to go back to the UFC. I dare him. See how the heavyweight division feels for you, Brock Lesnar. Go. Try your luck. See if Overeem doesn't kick your ass again. See if Francis Ngannou doesn't break your face. See if Stipe Miocic doesn't work you and finish you in under seven minutes. Try your hand at Daniel Cormier. See if he doesn't light your face up. I think he might. If it's Cormier going to win the title, I think he would try. Yeah, he's going to get smashed. Smashed to bits. He doesn't have the skill necessary to contend with Daniel Cormier. He doesn't have the skill necessary to contend with Stipe Miocic. He's got the skill to toss Roman Reigns around. And that's why he's not going to the UFC. So he's a guy. Big fish. Small pond. Big bully. Can't hack it in the UFC, so he plays the big man in the WWE. Shows up when he feels like it. 
has matches that are nowhere near the caliber as they were a couple of years ago. And he's going to be the longest reigning champion since Hulk Hogan in the 80s. He's still the biggest attraction in wrestling. I think it makes sense. Is he? He was a bigger star than Brock Lesnar. Chris Jericho. It's a different kind of star, in my opinion. He's To me, Chris Jericho, like, yes, he was WWE champion. The buzz for Jericho is so strong. But is he in the main event right now in New Japan? Pretty much. Is he, is he ending the show? Him and Naito are, I mean, that's the match. As much as Kenny Omega and Kazuchika Okada is a big match, it's for the heavyweight title, Jericho Naito is the match. That's the match with the hype. That's the real main event. But it's not in the show. It's going to be Okada and Omega. And Brock Lesnar, he ends the show. Ron is on the show. It's still Brock and in the show. Is it? So far. So far. Ronda is still it too early. It happened one time. It happened at WrestleMania. It's too early for Ronda. They're not going to give her the main event spot right away. Maybe next year's WrestleMania, they'll give it to Ronda if she's ready. If. And if Brock's not going to be defending by then, who knows? Where's Brock? Got to wait till SummerSlam. Shame on Paul Heyman, too. I mean, Paul Heyman was there week in, week out with CM Punk for those 434 days. He saw what Punk had to go through. He saw the grueling schedule they put him through. And now he's going to walk next to Brock Lesnar, this undeserving champion. Come on, Paul Heyman. What are you thinking, man? You saw what Punk did. Punk's the real champion. You know who's the real champion? AJ Styles is the real champion. And I hope that Brock drops a title at SummerSlam and AJ holds a title for a very, very long time now. Just so that AJ could be the guy to break the record. Well, Paul Heyman came back to WWE because of Brock Lesnar. CM Punk just kind of happened because it just worked out. That Brock wasn't around that point in time. Yeah, but I'm saying, how could you manage both guys, man? Punk is, you know, he's the real guy. He was the real champion. Brock is just a champion in name. You know, he's a paper champion. He's not the real wrestling champion. He's not a real wrestling champion. He doesn't deserve these records because he's not really there. He's an attraction that shows up once in a while. And that puts him above everyone else. You don't make the attraction the champion. Andre was never the champion. Taker was barely champion. You're saying Hogan wasn't an attraction? Well, Hogan was bigger than everything. Four years he was champion. And he was there every night. And people, the other wrestlers, would walk up to Hogan and thank him for being there because it meant that there was more money in their pockets because Hogan was there. Hogan made the wrestling business. Brock should call Hulk Hogan and thank him every single day of his life that he's got money from Vince McMahon. Because Vince wouldn't have that money if it were not for Hulk Hogan. I'm not going to disagree with you, but the wrestling business, the landscape of wrestling has changed. Where you don't need Brock Lesnar every week. You can save him, and it makes it more special when he comes out now. I just care about the history of the wrestling business and about uh, the WWE and the championships and, and the records there. I think, well, I, you know, they mean something to me. And when I see Brock breaking these records, when Punk talked about how long he was champion for, he made it mean something. Right. And now that Brock is breaking the record and no one's even talking about it, it means nothing. I'm sure it's, sa it's sad at me. Oh, maybe they'll mention it. Yeah. Maybe Roman Reigns will come out and say, hey, Brock Lesnar, you've been champion longer than anybody in 30 years. I heard that on Wrestling Uncensored because I listen. Because I need a good cry every once in a while. They're so mean to me. I'm the big dog, though. This is my yard. Brock's not even here tonight. And the WWE, they don't want to give me a shot at Brock because they know I beat him. Just like I beat him at WrestleMania. Hey, Roman, you didn't beat him at WrestleMania. 
Yeah, I did. WWE just doesn't want to tell you I beat him at WrestleMania. And I beat him at the Greatest Royal Rumble, too. Man, Roman's terrible. I'd be surprised if he's not the next Universal Champion, though. I don't care who the next Universal Champion is because I think every option that they're going to give us is going to be terrible. Unless the next Universal Champion is Sami Zayn or Kevin Owens, I don't want to see it. Well, if, if Kevin can win Money in the Bank, not possible. Is he going to win Money in the Bank? Oh, I doubt it. Who's winning Money in the Bank? You said The Miz for a while. I still believe it's going to be The Miz. I believe it's going to be The Miz, too. What he, did The Miz do? The he Miz lost. Was- <laughs> Yeah, he lost, but you know, you know what happens before you win money in the bank, right? You lose, yeah. You lose. Yeah. Miz lost. What did he lose in? What and happened? He, another six man they did. Uh against the New Day? Again he was with Samoa Joe and Rusev. Quite a big team. Right, that was the main event. It was New Day against Samoa Joe and Rusev and uh Joe and Rusev turned on The Miz, and that's why he lost. Well, because The Miz screwed up. Like, I think he pushed them into each other or something. Yeah. Yeah. And then Joe and Rusev attacked him. Wasn't a great main event. Wasn't a great SmackDown overall. Contract signing backstage? When the heck does that happen? I thought Nakamura's promo was great. Was it great because it was backstage, and they wanted to make sure it was prepared, and they could, like, tape it pretty much? I don't know. I thought it was really good, though. I enjoyed that. There's this is like lawyers there too or something were, were those guys lawyers or something like it didn't make sense like why they had extra people there. I feel like Nakamura is doing a little bit of a Tetsuya Naito impression though. He's being very tranquilo. Like you you if you don't watch Naito, it's it might be hard to explain. But the way Naito acts, Nakamura is starting to act like that. He's. When when Nakamura got slapped, he didn't get angry at AJ. He was just like, oh, you slapped me. That's crazy. Like, Naito kind of, he doesn't react to getting attacked. He's just like, oh, what are you doing? Why are you attacking me? He doesn't kind of fight back sometimes. Mm-hmm. He's very tranquilo, you know? And, and it frustrates his opponents. And I feel like Nakamura is v- being very kind of relaxed and... Hey, AJ, no, my pen, he's being weird, you know, he's just kind of playing mind games with AJ. My pen's broken, can I borrow your pen? You know, he's just, he's doing things that I feel like he's taking little bits of, of Naito's character. But that's okay, it's okay. I think he's doing a really good job at it. I think he's, I think he's being uh, the best heel version of Shinsuke that we've seen. I think it's improving every week. I like this version of Shinsuke Nakamura. I wouldn't be mad if he became WWE champion. I thought the promo was really good. AJ was a little over the top, though. He seemed really angry. But I kind of like that, too. I like how mad Shinsuke is, is making AJ. I like how much he's frustrating him. I thought that promo was pretty good. Well, I'm not going to disagree with you. I definitely feel... People in WWE are ripping off New Japan. There's no question about it. After okay. After watching SmackDown. Yes. Did they rip off New Japan? Now, Becky and Charlotte, if you saw my Twitter feed this week, I posted two videos. You can see them at Dave Simon MMA. The first video was from June 3rd, I think it was. A match ger- during the best of the Super Juniors between Will Ospreay and Flip Gordon. They do a spot. They, they go to kick each other. They hold each other's leg. They say, you let go. No, you let go. Okay, one, two, three, and they both let go. Two days later, on June the 5th, Charlotte and Becky are wrestling on SmackDown, and they do the exact same spot. And it looked very similar. They said, you let go. No, you let go. They count to three, and then they both slowly let go of the leg. I thought they totally ripped it off. Somebody on Twitter said to me, No, they've been doing this spot on house shows. They didn't rip it off. And then he sent me a couple videos, but in the video of them doing it on house show, they do grab each other's leg, but there's no count to three. Mm -hmm. There's no, like, they don't do that. I think somebody saw Flip Gordon and Will Ospreay, and they decided to use that spot on SmackDown. You see a lot of wrestling. You see a lot of indie wrestling. 
you're you wrestle, you come up with some of these spots. Is it possible that they didn't steal it? That they it's a coincidence? But it's a pretty big coincidence, right? Like they stole it. It's not impossible that they didn't steal it. It's just given I, the time difference, like it's hard to believe that they didn't. And the way it looks, it definitely looks like it's a complete steal. But it, yeah, it's not impossible. It's just I would doubt it. Given, have you seen that spot done before like that? See, that's it. The way it exactly done like that. I've seen it cash the leg and maybe try to punch each other back and forth kind of thing. But for it to end exactly that way, it's very hard to believe it wasn't stolen. I feel like the count to three yeah. really seems like, oh, that's kind of stolen. Is it stealing or is it kind of an homage to their match? Because it was a very good match. It's only an homage if you admit it. And if you don't admit it, it's stealing. I haven't seen either of them admit it. So it's stolen then. I kind of feel like maybe it wasn't even them. Maybe it was whoever put the match together. It could have been. Like if Finley put the match together. Yeah. You know Finley's watching New Japan. His son yeah. wrestles for New Japan. Of course. So you know Finley's watching it. And if you're a guy who watches New Japan and you know that Will Ospreay is going to wrestle Flip Gordon, you're going to tune into that match. That's one of the matches you want to see. It was very good. And I think Charlotte and Becky ripped it off a little bit on SmackDown. Yeah, it's happened before in wrestling. Let's remember Michelle McCool took the Styles Clash. Yeah. It happens. I, I don't agree with it, but it happens. And unfortunately, it seems to happen more with the women than it does with the guys. Or it just seems more apparent when the women do it, I guess. I was pretty proud of myself that I caught it, though. Pretty good, right? I caught them. I caught them in the act. Well, again, like... People can say like, oh, you know, they're just recycling something. Maybe someone else did it before, also in wrestling, and they took it from that. But clearly, I think they were watching New Japan. It's too close. Yeah, it, it's too much of a coincidence. Too close, too similar. Stolen move. I'm okay with that. You know what I'm not okay with? Big cast talking ever. No more. That big cast promo was crazy long weird that he just like he came out on the ramp and he just like stayed on the ramp kind of thing yeah and it started as an interview and then it just like renee just went away and Cass just kept talking and then they kept moving the camera they did the, the camera underneath them to make him seem gigantic yeah it's like we know what you're doing here guys it's like it's all right i thought the camera work on that promo was really odd and a bit distracting i thought uh the promo itself was just bad. He just talked a lot and said nothing. I'm big and you're small and blah, blah, blah. I'm going to beat you. You're not ready for anybody like me. You've never faced anybody like me. It's like, Cass, last pay-per-view, he beat you. What the hell are you talking about? It made no sense. And Daniel Bryan did a promo that was only on their YouTube channel or whatever. I tweeted it out. It was very good. It was like 90 seconds. It was great. Brian's saying, Cass, you don't have the wrestling ability. You don't have the wrestling knowledge to do the things that I'm going to do to you. You say you're going to break my leg. You don't know how. I was like, yes, that's true. He's like, you don't know how to do a heel hook, Cass. I'm like, yeah, exactly. You suck, Cass. You can't wrestle at all. You have no skills. You don't know how to do real leg attacks. You're terrible. Your wrestling looks fake as hell. Daniel Bryan's wrestling looks real. His heel hook looks real because he knows how to do a heel hook because he does jujitsu. More wrestlers should do jujitsu so the wrestling would look more real. Submissions in wrestling are very easy to tell between the real and the fake if you do jujitsu, like I do. When I see submission moves, a lot of the times I'm like, come on, that's ridiculous. Like when Ronda had Stephanie's arm in the arm bar, it's just like, what are you doing? It's not even like, hey, Rhonda, you know better. What are you doing here? It's ridiculous. And when Daniel Bryan applies his moves, they look real, they look smooth, they look authentic. When some other wrestlers apply submission holds like Miz or Randy, they do not look real or authentic. 
See, Miz was like, he said something about Miz Jitsu on on SmackDown this week. And he was like doing chops or something. He was doing like karate style stuff. And he's like, it's Miz Jitsu. And I'm like, Miz, I don't think you understand what jiu-jitsu is. There's no, it's not a striking art. It's a grappling art. Hey, Miz, do you know anything about grappling arts? You're a professional wrestler. Maybe you should check it out. Maybe you should figure out what grappling is. You're supposed to be a professional grappler, kind of. I mean, obviously not. A professional grappler would turn you into a pretzel because you don't know anything about grappling, obviously. It's really sad when I see professional wrestlers who don't know the first thing about actual wrestling. It's like, you don't belong in the wrestling business. 30 years ago, you would have been kicked out of the wrestling business. You had your leg broken, you would have been, you would have quit. But now you have guys that are pretty much entertainers. Guys like The Miz, guys like Cass. Guys in a real fight wouldn't last too long, regardless of how big Cass is. They're not even entertaining, though. That's the problem. Like, hey, if you were an entertainer and you couldn't fight, like, that's cool. Like, Enzo Amore, you know, as much as people may hate Enzo Amore, he was kind of entertaining. He was. Uh, Maybe he can't fight. He definitely can't rap. But, hey, man, he was kind of fun to watch. Miz, not so much. Cass, very much not. I would rather see 100 Enzo Amore rap videos than (laughs) another big Cass promo. Yikes. Yikes. Are you talking about Kanye West? Yikes. No, I'm not. (laughs) Have you heard Kanye's new album, Yay? Excellent, John. I saw you you tweet about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a new album with Kid Cudi. Kids See Ghosts. Check it out, John. It's excellent. I saw that you're going to apparently make a rap album. Yeah, I'm making a rap album. It's coming. I'm working on it. It takes a while. It's going to be several months process. Eventually, it will come out, though. Seven songs. It's going to be terrible. I look forward to it. Oh, it's going to be so bad. You're going to hate it. I'm going to hate it. No, I, I, it's going to chuckle, I'm sure. Could be good. Who knows? I'll Ma- do a song Macho about, Man was good. Like, I'll do a song about Johnny North. I'll do a Johnny North song. I do like your new entrance song. You'll come out to my me rapping. Like uh, Rocky Romero and Rapunky 3K. Cool. Okay. Yeah. I'll be your Rocky Romero. I look forward to that. <laughs> uh, Carl Anderson beat Luke Harper on SmackDown. I thought that was pretty cool. I like to see Carl Anderson winning a match and beating Luke Harper. The Bludgeon Brothers... Correct me if I'm wrong, but they have not lost since becoming the Bludgeon Brothers. Yeah, but you know they're not going to win at the pay-per-view, the club. Still, though. Like, when's the last time you saw any of these guys lose anything, look weak in any kind of way? All right, fine. That's good, but that's just to throw you off somewhat because it just seemed like it was so obvious that the Bludgeon Brothers were going to win. Maybe even if... Um, Rowan loses as well. I could see that. I think maybe Rowan's lost a match, perhaps, in singles. Okay. But that that you're right. They they barely ever lose. But still, they're they're not going to lose at the pay per view. You can try to twist it however way you want. Legend Brothers aren't losing the tag and pals anytime soon. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Especially not to uh, to Anderson and Gallows. Not right now. Maybe New Day, but that's about it. Yeah. I'd like to see New Day win Money in the Bank, but unlikely, I guess. Is it going to be Big E? I don't know. Like in the match? Yeah. I don't know. It's tough to say. I don't really care who it is. I'd be happy with any member of the New Day. Woods, uh, Big E, Kofi. Hey, you know Woods is going to take on Kenny Omega? In the video game That's right. Match. They're going to play yeah. Street Fighter against each other at E3. Street Fighter... Is it five? Or? I don't know. One of the Street Fighters. Kenny Omega is like big into it. V-Trigger, you know. Um, But that's kind of cool. E3 going on, I think, next week. Big for video games, John. Big. New Zelda coming out? I don't know, man. Nintendo's going to make some announcements. I don't think there's going to be a new Zelda. I'm hoping for a new Mario Kart. I really want a new Mario Kart. I'm going to get the new uh, Mario Tennis when it comes out. It looks very good. I played the demo, and it was very good. It was fun. Cool. Uh, let's stick to wrestling here, John. What are you doing? Uh, Asuka beat Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville two-on-one. 
Carmella was on commentary and attacked Asuka after the match. Is there any way Carmella somehow beats Asuka or like at Money in the Bank, it's Carmella versus Asuka for Carmella's title. Does Asuka take the title from her here, or does Carmella cheat to win, or does she lose by disqualification? Like, does Carmella escape Money in the Bank with her title? I think it's very possible. I, I know it might seem like it's not going to happen. It seems like Asuka would just like walk all over her, but I, I feel like they've invested so much in Carmella. That she's not just going to lose just easily. If anything, I could see a DQ finish and this being dragged for a little bit. Because it just doesn't make sense for Carmella to lose the, the championship right now. Also, have you heard the rumors about her? No. And John Cena? I have heard those rumors that she's with John Cena. Wow. But Nikki and Cena are back together. I think the Carmella rumors are just rumors. Okay. I've heard Nikki and Cena are back together. Rumors are rumors, right? Who knows what's real? Yeah, that's why you got to watch Total Bellas. That's why you got to listen to the Wrestling Uncensored pre show. You got to download the podcast at WrestlingUncensored.net so you know about Total Bellas and what's going on with, with Nikki and John. When's John coming back? Doesn't matter. SummerSlam? What's he going think... to come back for? What do you mean? What, he's, what does he have to do? He's John Cena. He's the heart and soul of this company, John. So is The Undertaker. When The Undertaker come back? Uh, Madison Square Garden house show. Isn't he? Aren't they doing a house show like in a month or two? Sometime this summer, Taker's coming back to wrestle a match at Madison Square Garden. Okay, John Cena will come back then too. Oh, is that when he's coming back? Well, we're gonna get Taker Cena again at WrestleMania. You know what's gonna happen? Really? Oh yeah. Why? Because it was a squash last year. Now we're gonna get an actual match. Cena was drunk. It wasn't his fault. Right. He was drinking in the crowd before the match. Remember that? When Cena was in the crowd, he had beers. He was all heartbroken over Nikki. So yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. It's not his fault that he lost that match. Um, Jimmy Uso and Naomi teaming up to beat Aiden English and Lana. I enjoyed that. I thought that was a fun match. And uh, Becky and Charlotte, you know, we did say they stole a move from Osprey and Gordon, but I thought their match was very good. I thought that match was excellent. I like that Becky won by yeah. submission, too. Yeah, she made Charlotte tap out to the disarmor. I thought that was cool. But it also makes you believe that Charlotte eventually will be champion again. Becky, not so much. She should be. I think Becky's very good. I think Becky's very good. Finally, Johnny North, before we wrap up, this show will air after the CM Punk fight. What's your prediction? I think it goes past the first round. Does he win? Oof, that's tough. Yeah, you know, let's say he wins. Yeah, sure. All right, we'll find out if Johnny North's right. Go to my Twitter feed at Dave Simon MMA for all the info. Check Johnny North's Twitter at North Genesis for all his wrestling bookings, like the next one. When can people see you? Seventeenth, four three twenty five Industrial Boulevard. Bell time two p.m. Tickets five dollars. The seventeenth of June. Yes. Oh, I, okay, okay. Father's Day, John. You remember remember the rules, right? You want presents. I want presents. You don't have to be my son. Just give me a gift and call me daddy. I am Dave Simon. WrestlingUncensored.net is our website. Go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ringsidereport.net for our very special UFC 225 post show. If you're watching the fights tonight, you want to check out all the results. Myself and Anthony D'Alessio on the youtube.com slash ringsidereport.net with a .net spelled out D-O-T-N-E-T. We're live there on the YouTube channel with the special UFC 225 post show, Wrestling Uncensored, Ringside Report Radio. We are everywhere. All the info on that on my Twitter feed once again at Dave Simon MMA and at WrestlingUncensored.net. Big thanks to Marco and Jimmy for helping us out. And a big thanks to you for listening. For Johnny North, I am Dave Simon, and this has been Wrestling Uncensored. Yeah, 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 yeah.